Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is gonna be sadly my last video all about the Dexcom. And I'm gonna be comparing the Dexcom G6 to the Freestyle Libra. I've got them both on because I wanted to do a little accuracy check between the two of them and I'm gonna be explaining the results of that shortly. But I did a video where I shared why I was trying the Dexcom for a month and I will link that below and it is kind of my unboxing and application video and first impressions of the Dexcom. And then I also shared two weeks ago my final thoughts and review after 30 days wearing the G6. But yeah, today I wanted to share what I think in terms of is it better or worse than the Freestyle Libra and the pros and cons of both because if you are new here and don't know, I normally get the Freestyle Libra prescribed on the NHS and I've been using it for about a year now and I've done loads of videos all about it because I absolutely love it. But yeah, I thought doing a little comparison of the two can help if you were trying to decide which kind of device would be best for you. So let's just get into it and kind of explain the main key difference between the two of them. And that is that the Dexcom is a continuous glucose monitor or a CGM and the Libra is a flash glucose monitor. Now the difference between these is that a CGM, which the Dexcom is, is constantly reading your glucose level on the sensor. It then every five minutes sends this data either to your phone or to a separate scanning device. And then that means that your device is constantly getting updates of your glucose levels throughout the day. And then it will send you alarms when you're going high or low and lots of other alarms that you can set up. And again, I explained all about the Dexcom alarms in that 30 day review video that I did. But the Libra or a flash glucose monitor, instead of sending that data constantly to your device, it will store it in the sensor itself. And then the data is only transferred again, either to your phone or to a separate transmitting device that you can get with the Libra when you scan it and then all the data is transferred and then it provides you with that data and with the graph. However, because it is not sending the data to your phone automatically, it means that you don't get those alarms telling you when you're going high or low. And so the main difference is that with a Dexcom or CGM, you get those alarms and with a Libra, you don't. However, what you can do is buy one of these and this is a Meow Meow. And what it does is it sits over your Libra like this, you attach it with some like stickers and then it turns your Libra into a constant glucose monitor. So this Meow Meow device will pick up that data from the sensor and then this device will then send it to your phone meaning that you can get alarms sent to your phone with the Libra if you buy a Meow Meow. Again, I have a whole video reviewing the Meow Meow and explaining the pros and cons. And so I won't go into that in this video. I'll link that one down below. But the main things to note are that it costs £170 and there are a couple of extra ongoing costs that are very small to keep it running. Um, but the cons of this versus the Dexcom mainly are the fact that the Meow Meow app will not work without internet connection whereas the Dexcom does so you'll have to if you're out of your house or away from your wi-fi you'll have to make sure that your data is turned on all the time if you want to be getting alarms while wearing the Libra with the Meow Meow and also the so the Meow Meow works with an app called Tomato and the Tomato app will only send you will only sound with the alarms and alerts if you have your phone on loud Whereas with a Dexcom, you can have a setting so that the alarms will sound whether your phone is on loud or not, meaning that you can have all of your other phone notifications turned off, for example, at night, but still get alerted with your blood sugar highs and lows. Whereas, yeah, with the Meow Meow and the Tomato app, that won't work. You have to have your phone on loud to receive those alarms. But again, I'll leave that review video down below for you if that is an option that you want to explore and it is a very good option, hence why I have invested in a Meow Meow. And another thing to note is that this review that I'm doing is for the Libra 1. There is now a Libra 2 and I believe even a Libra version 3, but I personally cannot yet access the Libra 2 or 3 on the NHS and the Libra 2 and 3 are both continuous glucose monitors and so they will send the alarms to your phone. And so that kind of segues me into the second thing which I want to discuss, which is the accessibility of both the Dexcom and the Libra. And again, this is talking about people in the UK because that's kind of my only area of expertise as I have tried to access both. So the Libra is available on the NHS as long as you can 
prove that you need it. You can do this either by proving that you have to do a finger prick at least eight times a day in order to maintain good control, or that you are experiencing uncontrollable or difficult to control high or low blood sugars that you cannot fix without the Libra, or if you are pregnant. So the route that I went down is that I was finger pricking multiple, multiple, multiple times a day, and that's how I managed to access my Libra on the NHS. But again, I did a whole video reviewing the Libra by itself and explaining the accessibility of it, which I will leave down below. But the main thing to note as well is that each NHS trust in England acts semi-independently. Actually, until recently, these rules and the accessibility of the Libra was only available in certain postcodes in the UK. It is now available UK wide. However, it is up to each doctor that you see to decide whether you qualify under those criteria. So some may say that your highs and lows aren't actually uncontrollable enough to warrant a Libra. And it means that any time you move and become registered in a new NHS trust, you again have to prove that you need the Libra and get a new diabetes specialist doctor to recommend it for prescription for you. So as soon as you move, you're gonna to have to go through the whole process again, which is what I am currently having to do right now. Now the Dexcom on the other hand is not really available on the NHS. So to get it prescribed to you for free, you have to prove that you are experiencing severe hypos or loss of awareness of hypos. And so you need that Dexcom to alert you when you are going low because you can no longer sense it yourself. However, if you are in this position, it is likely as well that you may also lose your driving license because one of the conditions of having a driving license as a diabetic in the UK is that you have well controlled blood sugars and you can sense when you are going low. So just be aware that that may be a roadblock that you hit if you try to like convince your doctor that you need a Dexcom and say that you have now lost hypo awareness, they may take your license away from you. So it is actually very rare to be able to get a Dexcom system for free in the UK prescribed on the NHS. So let's just discuss, discuss, discuss costs if you can't get either system prescribed to you. So you can buy both direct from Abbott or from Dexcom, depending on which one you're going for. Now, the Libra costs £60 per sensor, and these are replaced every 14 days. However, if you are buying the sensor as a diabetic or for a type 1 diabetic, you then can get the tax exempt, which makes them around £50 per sensor, which works out to roughly £100 per month. Now, the Dexcom is a bit more complicated because you have to apply a new sensor every 10 days, and also every three months, you have to get a new transmitter. But the cheapest way to go about funding a Dexcom, if that's something that you want to do, is to sign up to their subscribe and save plan, where they send you every month what you need at a cost of £159 a month. So the Dexcom will be more expensive. It's about 50% more than the Libra if you do the subscribe and save plan. But if you just buy one off sensors, it does work out more expensive long term. So now that the costs and accessibility is out of the way, I wanted to discuss more about how they both function. So I'm going to start with application and to be honest with you, both application processes are pretty quick and pretty easy. So I would say Personally, the Dexcom application process is slightly better just because you literally just put it onto your skin and push a button and it's done. Whereas the Libra, you have to like push it in yourself. There's like a plunger that you push in, um, which means that it, when you apply a Dexcom, you feel slightly more removed from the process and like the technology is kind of doing it all for you. Whereas the Libra can feel a bit more like you are in control and that can be a bit nerve wracking for some people. However, realistically, there isn't much of a difference. It's just pushing a button as opposed to plunging it in yourself. Neither of them are painful. In fact, I actually feel the Dexcom going in slightly more than when I put the Libra in myself. However, like I said, neither of the sensations of pain, I'd say more you are aware that Something is going in, but it's super quick, like a little with both of them. But what I will say about the Dexcom application process is there are kind of two cons in the fact that number one, it produces more waste than the Libra. Both sensors actually produce a fair bit of waste, which does really bother me because 
large portions of it are not recyclable but the Dexcom definitely produces more waste and more plastic and also with the Libra in each sensor you get sent two alcohol swabs to clean the site before you apply it and with the Dexcom you don't get provided any form of way of cleaning your site so you'll have to either buy alcohol swabs yourself or do like a good old clean of your site before you apply it so that is just one thing to bear in mind you'll need to stock up on some kind of sterilizing equipment if you go for the Dexcom. Another thing to note I kind of mentioned this earlier is that the Libra lasts 14 days and the Dexcom lasts 10 days. Now this is also a teeny bit annoying in the fact that obviously with every 10 days you're applying it more often but also it's a bit harder to get into a routine. So for example with the Libra I know that every other Wednesday night I apply it and then every Thursday, uh, every other Thursday morning I'll then activate it. So I activate it 12 hours normally after I apply it to allow the site to calm down and that means that it will be more accurate when you do activate it. Doing it this way means I know that I activate it normally on a rest day because it does take an hour to warm up and so there's an hour where you won't have any glucose readings. So I like to do it on a day where I'm not gonna be in the gym and wanting to scan and see my glucose. But when it's every 10 days, like with the Dexcom, this means that it will be a different day every week. And so you can't really plan to do it always on a rest day or always on a day that you have off work or whatever. It also does take two hours to warm up instead of one. But in terms of the scheduling of the Dexcom, it is slightly more inconvenient than the Libra. I mentioned at the beginning that I have been wearing both to kind of do an act accuracy check and so I'm going to discuss a little bit now about how accurate they both are. Now one thing to kind of preface this with is that so I didn't want to wear both sensors for the full amount of time because I can't afford to be wasting money like that in wearing two sensors so I decided to do the last day of the Dexcom and the first day of the Libra and compare their accuracy because normally it is those first and last days that are the least accurate and so I wanted to see how they compare. For a full 24 hours I was checking my glucose at the same time on both of them and then comparing this to a finger prick and let me just read you the results. So I like noted it all down. So on one point, at the beginning of the day my Libra was saying 7.2, my Dexcom was saying 5.6, so that was a bit of a difference, and then my finger prick said 7.7, .7, so the Libra was a bit closer. Then partway through the day, my Libra was 7.4, Dexcom was 6.4, and my real glucose again was 7.7. .7. Later on, I was having a bit, I thought I'd also check it while I was kind of, my blood sugar was in the process of rising and falling, because that's when they tend to be slightly less accurate because it hasn't caught up with your new glucose and so I checked over on a high blood sugar my Libra was saying 13.2 my Dexcom was saying 10.8 my finger prick said 11.4 and then again at the final time that I checked my Libra said 5.6 Dexcom said 4.2 and my finger prick said 4.8 so that shows that normally my Libra is reading higher than my Dexcom, but neither of them were bang on at any one point over the course of this day. However, if you've seen my Libra videos and my Dexcom review, there are days more in the middle of the sensor wearing time when they have been literally the exact same as my blood tests and they've been spot on accurate. So this just kind of shows a comparison between the two in that the Libra tends to read slightly higher and the Dexcom slightly lower in this case but also that on those first and last days of sensor wear they are a bit less accurate than those middle days and that's just something to be aware of again I kind of noticed this with the Dexcom in the first kind of days of it it was a bit higher and then like at the middle it was reading pretty much bang on and then like I just explained towards the end of sensor wear it tends to read slightly lower so that's just something to be aware of but realistically none of those numbers were far off from what my finger prick said and I would say I'd be happy to kind of treat and correct off of any of those numbers that my sensors said other than that one high when my Libra was reading quite a bit higher I would be kind of annoyed if I corrected for all of that because that would be a whole extra unit of correction that would then send me hypo but in general they are accurate enough to treat off of in my opinion. So I also want to discuss as well, as, as well a bit about the comfort of wearing the sensors and to be honest I haven't had a problem with either of them. So the Libra is approved for wearing on the back and sides of your arm and the Dexcom is approved for the back of your arm and also your stomach. 
Now I was initially wary of putting the Dexcom on my stomach because I thought it would get in the way of clothing and I would feel it a lot more but to be honest I actually really loved the stomach site and I prefer it to the arm site and obviously Libra isn't approved for the stomach so I do prefer that about the Dexcom. Also I thought I would catch clothes on it more in terms of waistband on my stomach but what I actually find with both of them on the arms is that you're more likely to catch it on sports bras and bras if because obviously you're kind of like putting it above um so you just do have to be wary of that but i personally haven't ever had issues of either of them falling off i think in my whole year and a half of having the libra it's fallen off maybe twice and that's been when i've knocked it on kind of the last day or the day before the last day but if you do have problems with either of them falling off I say this all the time, but I really recommend Expression Med Tape. They have tapes for Dexcoms and Libras and different types of devices like pumps and other CGMs. And it's just stickers that you can put around to help it stay on. And they're really kind of personalized. So you can either go with ones that are more skin color if you want them to like blend in, or you can have like really funky patterns if you want to put a bit more personality onto your devices. On that note, one thing I would also say is that the Dexcom does look, hang on, let me get a proper, it does look, I would say, slightly more medical um, because you've got this whole thing and then all the tape and it is slightly bigger in terms of it sticks out a teeny tiny bit more um, and obviously the actual site is bigger compared to the Libra. It is a lot smaller and it doesn't, <laughs> I don't know, in my opinion, it doesn't look as medical, but to be honest, I don't care what my devices look like personally. I'm all for them just being there to help me manage my diabetes and be as healthy as possible. But I do know that people are conscious of their diabetes and of showing their devices. So that is just one thing to consider. The Dexcom does stand out a bit more on your body. And the last topic that I wanted to cover is the apps themselves that you use to view your glucose levels and also all of your data. Dexcom is actually two apps. You have the Dexcom app, which is where you see your blood glucose and it's what also sends you your alarms. And then you have the Clarity app, which provides you all of your data and all of your graphs and insights into your blood sugar trends. And for the Libra, it's all on one app. So you that's where you scan your Libra and see your glucose and see all of the data. I don't know if I made this clear at the beginning, but instead of just showing you a number of your blood glucose as well, with both of them, it gives you an arrow to show you where your blood glucose is going, if it's going up or down. And also it produces a graph of your blood glucose throughout the day. I would say that the Dexcom graph is actually a bit more forgiving and a bit nicer to look at than the Libra graph. Because if you look at the Dexcom in the normal kind of portrait view, the graph is only for the last three hours. And so there's quite a lot of time for it to be spread out. And all the peaks don't look as dramatic as on the Libra. The graph it shows you is the last 24 hours in the portrait view. So it looks like you're going up and down quite quickly. And so the highs can look a bit more high and a bit more like you've spiked. So that is just one thing to kind of note that the Dexcom is a bit more forgiving in the way that it shows you your blood glucose. Both devices actually show you slightly different stats. So on the Dexcom, it shows you your average blood glucose for the day, the standard deviation, your estimated HbA1c, and the time spent in your target range. And it also provides you insights into patterns. So it will tell you you are having highs, at night or between this time and this time you often go low and that is a super super useful feature again in my full dexcom review i explain all of the stats that the dexcom kind of shows you and how they can be useful to you i won't go completely all into them now but on the dexcom clarity app as well you can download reports which show you loads and loads of data like a full report you would get if you went to your diabetes clinic and it shows you this data for every two seven 14, 30, and 90 days. Now, the Libra shows you a graph of your average daily patterns, as well as your average glucose per time of day, the number of hypos you have per time of day, your time spent within your target range, your estimated HbA1c, as well as obviously your daily graph. And again, these stats are shown for every seven, 14, 30, and 90 days. So the only one you don't have is the two days on the Libra, but to be honest, I don't think two days is particularly necessary because 
anything that you see over two days is likely not going to be a long-term pattern. Also on the Libra app, you can order new sensors directly from the app if you are buying them rather than getting them on NHS prescription and you can set reminders to inject and scan your blood sugar, which is really helpful if you are someone who maybe forgets sometimes to do your basal or bolus insulin. Now on the Dexcom app instead, what you can do is log different events for your day. So for example, you can log carbohydrate, exercise, long acting insulin, short acting insulin, and also health factors like illness, stress, when you're feeling high, when you're feeling low, when you're on your period and also you can log alcohol and this can be a really useful feature to help identify patterns in your blood sugar and causes for those patterns so for example you could see that every day at 11 a.m you're regularly going low and maybe by logging all of these things you find out that it is your morning workout that is having a delayed effect on your blood sugar and causing a hypo you can then correct that by tailoring your insulin and your food around that hypo period of time that happens on a regular basis and the Dexcom app does also tell you the number of days in the last week that you hit your target time in range so you can set like a goal for yourself of how much of the time you want to spend within your target blood glucose range and every week it will tell you how many days you hit that goal and it will also tell you your best day of the last week and what your kind of best time and range figure was which i find personally really motivational because as diabetics we don't often get a lot of like rewards or well dones for like putting in all this effort and obviously a little notification from an app isn't really a lot it's not going to make a big difference to your life but it is nice to know that all the work you're putting in every day is paying off and you are hitting those goals that you set for yourself for your diabetes. So both apps provide a lot of data and a lot of statistics. So it just depends which statistics you think are gonna be best for you for managing your diabetes and improving your blood sugar control. So in summary, I adore both systems, especially in comparison to finger pricks, not only because you don't have to do finger pricks and it takes out a lot of time from your day, but also in terms of the amount of information it gives you and having those arrows telling you whether your blood sugar is going up or down is honestly a real, real life changer. But obviously, I would tend to say that the Dexcom is better than the Libra one because you do get those alarms and alerts as to when your blood sugar is going high or low. You can get the Meow Meow with the Libra, but again, I don't think the Libra plus Meow Meow is as good of an option as the Dexcom in terms of how you can customize those alarms and alerts. But it does annoy me that the Dexcom is only every is every 10 days and so you can't create that routine with your new sensor application. And also obviously, like I mentioned, I get the Libra for free on my NHS prescription. And so for the time being, I will definitely be sticking with the Libra because I can't afford to be paying out 160 pounds every month for the Dexcom. But as soon as either the Dexcom or the Libra 2 or 3 becomes available to me on prescription, I will be switching from flash glucose monitoring to continuous glucose monitoring as soon as I physically can. But yeah, for now, for me, it's gonna be the Libra plus the Meow Meow, so I can still get those alarms and alerts. So like I said, all of my Dexcom and Libra and Meow Meow videos will be linked for you down below if you want to see my full reviews of each system individually. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it has been useful for you if you are considering getting a Libra or a Dexcom or any kind of CGM for that matter. And please do let me know down below any videos that you would like to see from me in the future and I'll make them for you as soon as possible. But for now, that is it for this one and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!